Paul Horvat. Paul and his team have worked really closely with U.S. Rowing uh, to make sure that this is the most highly attended convention since 1997, which is awesome, almost 20 years. I think we have about 850 folks here. And true to the work hard, play hard mantra, this convention has delivered with tremendous educational and networking opportunity by day, and of course, plenty of play by night. Um, so hopefully, most of you got to attend the Rock and Roll last night. Great look at how historic um, and fun our history is. Um, 18 months ago, Len Mary and our board of directors hunkered down to assess kind of the state of U.S. growing, where we had been, where we wanted to go. Um, and as we went through our evaluation and assessment, as with any organization, there is the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, so we took a weekend in June of 2014, 18 months ago, and sat through a, a two-day strategic planning retreat. Um, and at that point, Glenn and the board committed to chart a new path for U.S. rowing. Um, this time last year, we stood up here and talked about what had gone on in the six months um, since that retreat and the accomplishments. And we're going to continue talking and celebrating that today um, with what has gone on in this last year. It's been an awesome year of, of great racing um, with our national teams, a lot of accomplishments, some good headlining sponsorships have come in. Um, but first, I'm going to bring Gary Caldwell, our board treasurer and Northeast director, to close out our 2014 financial for you. I've tried to think of ways to make this exciting and pleasurable and fun, but you're just going to have to listen. <laughs> so, on behalf of the United States Rowing Association Board of Directors, I pre present this report on U.S. Rowing's financial status as of December 31st, 2014, our most recently completed fiscal year. The Finance Committee has reviewed and verified the results being presented to you today based on the U.S. Rowing internal financial records for 2014 and on the 2014 audit by Klatskin and Company, LLP, our auditors. Klatskin and Company, LLP, has given an unqualified opinion that our financial statements present a fair, complete representation of our financial activities and conditions. Our 2014 operating revenue was 7.81 million, up about 840,000 from 2013, approximately a 12% increase. Revenues from regattas increased substantially, revenues from membership dues and contributions were flat, revenues from the USOC slash grants and sponsorship increased significantly, and the revenue from fundraising events and merchandise increased substantially. These seven areas accounted for over 90% of the association's revenues. Operating expenses increased slightly ahead of revenues, and we finished the year with an operating loss of approximately 230,000, excluding a loss of 2,000 from the Women's Endowment, which is temporarily restricted and unrealized. The Casitas Fund, which provides substantial support to U.S. rowing, retains its independent status, although it is included in our financial statements. Filed as an affiliate organization due to the 2012 change in FASB rules and appearing as such in our combined statement of activities. We decreased net assets by about 200,000. At the end of 2014, the association had about $280,000 in cash, equivalents and investments on hand, retaining a positive unrestricted fund balance. The following sections detail our largest active programs. Membership services. Membership's principal sources of revenue are individual and organizational dues, merchandise, and revenue from the regions and committees. Our overall dues revenues were level in 2013. Membership services revenue was about 1.85 million in 2014, compared with 1.85 million in 2013. Revenues from membership services cover things like liability insurance and general administrative expenses unrelated to our national team. In the th 2014, we had 16,559 full privilege championship individual members. 1,306 organizational members, compared with 15,357 individual members and 1,252 organizational members at the end of the previous year. We also added 52,568 unpaid basic members. The names and addresses of all those folks may be found at the offices of the United States Rowing Association, located at 2 Wall Street, Princeton, New Jersey, 
0-8540. National team. Our second major program is the national team. Revenue consists principally of USOC grants, National Rowing Foundation grants, adaptive slash para rowing grants, other contribution and grants to the team and team sponsorship. National team gets a substantial boost from the annual Princeton golf outing. National team services include the cost of team training, coaching, equipment trials, and NSRs and support staff. Total operating revenue for the national team was, for 2014 was about 3.36 million, compared to 3.46 million for 2013. Total national team expenses in 2014 were about 3.45 million, up from 3.39 million in 2013. Events. Our third major program department events handles our championship events like the national championships, masters nationals, club nationals, regional championships, and the youth national championships. In 2014, events had total revenues of approximately $950,000 up about $86,000 from 2013, which saw revenues of about $864,000. General and administrative. Overhead or management and general expenses includes the salaries of our executive director, controller and partial salaries of other non-national team staff. These expenses also include our offices in Princeton, printing, postage, telephone, legal, some travel, and other professional fees. Our total general and administrative expenses for 2014 were about 728,000, representing a decrease of 30,000 from 2013. If you would like a copy of U.S. Rowing's audited financial statement for 2014, please contact Brian Klausner at brian at usrowing.org. The 2014 audited financial statements are also posted on U.S. Rowing's website at usrowing.org. U.S. Rowing benefits greatly from the National Rowing Foundation, which has grown in its role as the primary fundraising source for the national team. In 2014, the NRF provided a grant of $990,000 to the national team program, a $40,000 increase to their substantial grant of 2013. On behalf of U.S. Rowing and its board, staff, and coaches, we would like to acknowledge and thank the National Rowing Foundation whose efforts make our national team athletes dreams possible. Respectfully submitted the treasurer of U.S. Rock. Thank you. Thank you, Gary, for that riveting report. <laughs> Sinily. Um, so I just want to point out that on all of the chairs and at the tables out there that uh, we have a flip card that has information points by the month for this past year beginning last January and accomplishments um, that that U.S. Rowing has made in the last year. Um, and now we're going to bring up our Northwest Board of Directors, Sawyer Hall, and he is going to walk us through um, some really high points and celebratory moments um, for our organization as we continue to push for growth and expansion. I don't know if I can follow Gary's act there. Uh, I'll try. There are, I counted it before um, coming up here, I counted, there's about 50 people in this room, I think. So uh, if there's 800 people, do the math, that's what, 7% of people are here. Um, I salute the 7% of you that are here. Uh, thank you. We're going to make it worth your while. Um, and for actually even just being here at this, at this, uh, this convention. Um, I thought I'd start out by a brief introduction, uh, just a little bit beyond um, Aaron. Uh, to, um, to, to hear, yeah, I was gonna say, to, to be able to listen and open your, open your mind, um, you, you kind of have to know a little bit about, about the person I think that's talking, and you know, cred is really important in this sport, I know. So go to worldgrowing.org and you will not see my profile up there. Um, uh, my, um, my, I'm just a pretty average guy, average, average grower. Uh, my, my claim to fame um, and swan song moment uh, happened this, this summer actually. The uh, 2015 
winner right here of the Corporate Challenge, Corporate Challenge Cup um, put on by uh, at the Summer Splash in Windermere and Pocock Foundation. And there's, uh, there's, uh, Matt Macy there. Um, in our boat is a 500 meter sprint. Um, caught a crab, I think, in meter 300 or something like that, and still managed to pull it out. Two or three people who never rode before in their entire lives. Uh, a couple of high school kids. Uh, high school coxswain, and how much money was raised for Pocock Foundation, Matt? Uh, about $30,000 that day was raised. So it's about uh, bringing a lot of people together to, uh, to row, and that's why I'm here, and that's why I'm doing this um, as a member of the board. Uh, you know, I, for the first time along those lines, was brought last night to um, rock the row. I have never been to Boathouse Row before, and um, let's see. Uh, Jim, Deets, are you, there's Jim. Um, Jim, who, who, who's familiar with Jim? Like, historian, storyteller, <laughs> rower extraordinaire, coach extraordinaire. The guy had more stories and more, more history to share with us. Um, we walked into uh, Undying Boat Club. Um, and what should we see up there? But I think from about 40 years ago, there was a poster. And the poster said, keep growing with rowing. Um, probably about three months ago, we had had a big brainstorm. But what's the hook that's going to bring people here, you know, to, to this session? And um, it was, you know, let's, let's, let's row. Let's, uh, you know, have rowing grow and growing through rowing. Um, and so it, it, it's definitely coming full circle. As I was... Um, Thinking about you know what what's the purpose of this conversation and the next few slides I'm going to share, uh, and last night it really struck me those walls were packed packed with awards, medals, names. I don't think there's any more room to put more names up there in any of those boathouses. So I my my mission, our mission uh, as U.S. Rowing is to create a high class problem for uh, for these clubs, which is to create so much more names, so many more opportunities that they don't know where to put all these names. They're going to have to build a new boathouse or build a new wing or something like that. So that's goal number one. Goal number two is that we spread the boathouse row uh, grouping of, of boathouses and repeat that along waterways all over the country and that we grow the sport like you wouldn't believe in, in, in a model much much to the same way that uh, the Boathouse Row did, did here. So I think it's a really, really neat reflection on what, where we've been and where, where we're headed. Um, next slide. Uh, touched on just now the, the mission that we're on and, and the, the role of U.S. rowing and why, you know, the essence of why we're here after having this conversation is um, you just heard the, the financials. Um, uh, it's a serious business around making sure that um, enough money is brought in to, to grow the sport that actually we think very deeply about where the sport's headed and what, what role and what assurances uh, U.S. rowing as, a, as, an, as an institution can bring to benefit the entire, the entire community. And also think about um, what does it mean to do everything from be winning medals at the podium at the world class level, um, but also at the grassroots level be thinking about safety, clean sport, clean waters, uh, rules, um, and all the basics, all the fundamentals. So U.S. Rowing truly is that platform and that uh, seedbed that's going to help the entire, the entire sport grow and work well together. Uh, um, as Aaron mentioned, we got together about a year and a half ago and really thought through what are our strategies and where, where do we want to take, take growing and, and how can U.S. Rowing can support that. Um, internal systems, that speaks to the platform piece. I'm going to take you through quickly not some of the successes there. Partnerships, essential, essential. And there's been some incredibly great work uh, with the community around partnerships to share. Um, access, creating new uh, access to new venues, that's very uh, important as well. Um, and thinking about new communities. We have to think very, very broadly about um, who's getting into the sport, what types of people are going to benefit from this, um, that we haven't thought of before traditionally. How can we be more and more and more inclusive um, every, every year and be mindful of that? Um, and then the brand is the last piece. Uh, of course, metrics matter. Uh, so you're measuring yourself around success. Growing membership is a great baseline metric to just say, is this, is this effective? People will not be members if there's not uh, benefit uh, recognized. 
service quality, we're not just going to grow and then turn around and say, we're losing people who were members in the next year because there was not great service provided. So uh, service can come in many, many different forms, and we're going to talk about that. And then, of course, growing revenue. How can we bring more and more and more revenue into the sport? Um, I belong to a, a local club out in uh, Seattle, uh, Lake Sammamish Rowing Club. I know uh, they've been spending years to raise money for a boathouse, raise money for new equipment, and all of you face the exact same thing. You go to the same people every year uh, to raise money, and I think what U.S. Rowing is doing is in, in collaboration with everybody here and in the sport is where can we bring in new money and create new levels of interest from, from different folks and new, value, new uh, areas of value. How do we do? Let's just jump right in. Next one. <laughs> Number two. Uh, in the last year, uh, the, way, the way that this works is there's uh, uh, paying championship members and then uh, membership uh, where you join and, and there's not a, a, a membership um, fee. And the uh, focus on, that's the championship membership growth. That's up 27%. So we're up at around 80,000 members right now who are uh, in U.S. rowing, and if anyone has the exact number of how many people are actually out there rowing and competing, please see me. I've heard about, um, from uh, Chip Davis to uh, a bunch of others, that there's maybe a couple hundred thousand rowers, give or take, out there racing, but I uh, would love to, you know, compare notes with people. But yeah, our mission is that there's as much inclusion as possible in U.S. rowing, and that there's a real... Uh, reason for people to be become members and, and join this community. So something to be very proud of is, is the membership growth this last year alone, up over 27%. Um, you can look at, at the, uh, the growth here. This, um, there's nothing better than a map to show where, you know, represent where the growth is happening. And then you can actually attribute why some of these things are happening. Um, so I have to give a good shout out to the uh, middle of the country, there's been quite a bit of growth there. Um, there's been some new U.S. rowing, uh, new U.S. rowing event, um, uh, and event uh, racing that, that happened in the mid middle of the country. Um, and there was actually a race venue change in the southeast, and we believe that's what uh, attributed to the to the decline. Up in the northeast, there's been a tremendous increase as well, and that's um, attributable to the great hard work that uh, the membership organization has done within U.S. Rowing, just being present, feet on the street, uh, interacting with, with uh, members at, at all the different races and events. So, um, uh, great job uh, on the part of the, the team. Service quality. Uh, service quality comes in many forms. Um, you really have to know who you're serving and um, be very responsive to that. Um, it's a learning experience every day that the, the U.S. Rowing uh, staff um, uh, comes into the office every day and thinks about that. Um, it's, it was a very deliberate, deliberate step to say we're going to increase service quality, we're going to do the things that it takes. That's everything from being responsive to questions that come up to getting in front of, um, of benefiting people with more and more information. Um, so that had, you know, the organizational structural changes and cultural changes that happen, have happened. Um, and then also uh, there are um, things like the website, and you're going to see a lot more re redesigning and retooling of the website. The way that the database is, is um, handled as well around memberships and sign-in, where it's going to be much easier to um, enroll as a member, to understand who you are, and to be able to have conversations with different groups of people. Um, and then you're going to see also there's a, an admin fee for those members I talked about in the basic of $5.75 um, is a, essentially a cost recovery that's going to be, uh, be uh, put into action in the coming year as well. Growing revenue. Uh, this is a very, very important part of running a business and to being able to even have the opportunity to think about how to increase programs, how to um, broaden services, how to amplify uh, things like um, adaptive rowing um, and erg ed and all those sorts of programs. Without being able to grow revenue, we can't even have those, those types of conversations, let alone being able to bring new money in that's going to help support our, our national team. Um, so you can see here a number of major sponsors. Is, is Boathouse represented here in the room today? No? They're outside? Okay. 
you know, they're an example. Their local presence has been um, very, very supportive uh, uh, of the, the collaboration with uh, U.S. Rowing and have really attributed to some nice revenue growth. And of course, uh, Liberty Mutual announcement that happened and the partnership that happened with them this last year um, has been a tremendous, tremendous benefit to the entire U.S. Uh, uh, US rowing and rowing community. Grants is another uh, avenue for revenue growth. And again, the U.S. rowing staff has put a lot of focus on that um, and has uh, benefited dearly. Um, and we're incredibly appreciative of, uh, you can see some of the, the, names, the names down there, which has gone to um, establishing really great programs within veterans rowing, um, adaptive rowing, um, rowing benefits for, for underserved communities. Uh, expanding our reach. Um, you can see here uh, that being able to um, work with these new communities, this is really the, the, once the money comes in, what are those types of programs that we can, we can most benefit? Um, again, uh, Matt Lacey with, with Erged and his entire team has done a great job. He's a great example of, of a group that uh, came together with U.S. Rowing uh, over the year, this last year, and really put into place these uh, the, 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 be the beginnings of really neat Erged programs around the country to take something that's being done really well in one location and, and, and have that be amplified across the country. Those are the types of activities that we at U.S. Rowing are, are really passionate about finding and, and, and supporting. Again, just these are different mechanisms for um, collaborating with really terrific brands and uh, organizations who have a captive audience, who have a terrific brand, who have a great mission that is very, very complementary to U.S. Rowing. Um, rowing Magazine, everyone's very familiar with that. That evolved very nicely over this last year. Erget, I've mentioned, Regatta Central, we've done a lot of work this last year with Regatta, Regatta Central around um, uh, membership database and really deeply improving that, um, that experience. Waterkeeper's a new one, you're going to be hearing a lot more about that, and especially I think the headlines uh, this week and probably about four weeks ago and probably about eight weeks ago before that was around the clean water issues in Rio. Um, and it, it's just a, the whole topic of sustainability, Paris Climate Conference. Um, it's a very nice complement with, with water keepers. And there's a lot that we as rowers can do to uh, be in support of, of clean water and put our high school kids, our scholastic kids, um, into, into a project and be mindful of that as well. Um, access new venues. Uh, Pensacola um, Coastal Race was a great success. It was putting our toe in the water. Um, this last year, it happened this month, this last month, actually in November, um, and it's really testing the waters on a new category, a new genre, and John Wick is, uh, was behind getting, getting that going, um, and uh, look for more to come around coastal racing in particular, um, but also it's a great example of, of us testing, experimenting, just new ways and new categories to, to bring more and more people into the sport that's not the traditional uh, 2,000 meter course. Um, I've been involved in uh, alumni sprints uh, regatta, so a little plug for them as well. That's going to be kicking off this next year and it's going to be a 350 meter race format series and those are going to be, be being experimented with around the country this next year. So look for a race like that to be coming to your neighborhood soon. Um, here you can see a lot of energy has been put into uh, supporting the development of new venues um, uh, and really getting the racing, the competitive uh, uh, venues developed. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of work to get, to get these going from um, ideation all the way to uh, in implementation. Um, takes years oftentimes to get, to get permitting through. But there's no sense in recreating the wheel here. Uh, you, we definitely have to find ways to have that common list and that common uh, support network when there's a new venue opportunity in your community that you know right where to go to tap that within the U.S. Rowing uh, resource um, basin and, and, and the support will be there to, to speed it up. Last is the brand. Um, uh, just a preview on that, there's going to be a lot, a lot more over this next year rolling out about the brand. 
I think that um, a, a good way to put it is, since we're all rowers here, and we can use the rowing metaphor appropriately here, uh, and people get it, is um, we, you know, shot out of the starting blocks in the, in the race started a, a year, year and a half ago, as Aaron mentioned, um, with really understanding as a, as, a, as a board group what we wanted to do, where we wanted to go, where we wanted to take the organization. Um, and I'd say uh, over this last year, we've been pulling hard into we're, we're, we're out in front, we're doing incredibly, incredibly well, but we're in the middle of the race. Um, we have not crossed the line, there's not success yet. I think brand and, and really changing the culture, drawing more and more people in with the right, the right frame of mind is, is going to be incredibly important and something that everyone here is going to be able to contribute to. The picture behind the scene there is really uh, what I think is one of the coolest, coolest activities that happened this, this last year was the graduation ceremony um, at uh, Youth Nationals. Uh, just think about it. This is the thing that these young people feel incredibly connected to. They were part of the rowing culture. It's such a part of their life. It's these youth who in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years are the ones who are going to be participating, replacing us, be in the jobs, be in the roles, having their kids do it. So um, kudos to, to, to U.S. Rowing and everyone for, for helping make this happen. Um, lest we forget the road to Rio. Uh, You'll be seeing more about that. Pass this on to your peers, your teams, your rowers. Uh, we, we all are there to support support uh, the, the races in, in 2016. And that's it. If you just go to the last slide, um, the last, last slide, uh, Unleashing the Champion Within. Um, it's not just for champions up there who are winning gold medals, which um, is an incredible uh, accomplishment. It's for everybody has that champion within, and that's what we're all here to do. So let's go get them. Thank you. Paul Horvath, can you come on up for a second? Um, Paul Horvath is our Mid-Atlantic um, representative on the Board of Directors, and Paul has served the association um, and everyone since 2011. And we have had um, some incredible growth times, conversations, debate, um, but a, a very much a shared passion, all of us, um, for being partners with you and, and really growing the sport. Um, so in recognition of Paul's extraordinary service, congratulations. Paul will be rolling off of our board at the beginning of March, so we want to come to the table tonight, Paul. Thank you.